and good evening. Welcome to Thrills Pilots uh, live show. A uh, little bit late. Uh, technical issues, from what I understand. Or oh, well, technical issues that I don't understand is probably closer to the mark. Uh, today we are going to look at improving the trot. And me. I'm gonna look at her. Uh, but the the whole idea here is uh, that we wanted to set this up so we could look at a horse that has improved his trot. And then we will talk about and explain and you know all the things about how to improve the trot as we go along. And they, I'm feel I'm feeling a little embarrassed because you know we have this poster with poster, poster boy. Kid. yeah yeah uh, and with you and Otis yeah and it looks awesome and then me and Dalton comes and it's not so awesome, but the the relative, um, you know he's become much better yes the last days Absolutely. or years <laughs> so it's even been a, a years actually a, not, yeah. not only the it last days a long find. time yeah um that right. is that but that is a something that we need to know absolutely that uh, improving yeah some things you can improve quite quickly if you're good but if there is deep rooted problems then you will have to to take time to fix it yeah all right so if your horse is already improving by leaps and bounds in the trot, don't mind us. <laughs> but if you have some of these deep-rooted problems, or even if you just want to learn more, then tag along and we will show you uh, how to improve the trot and uh, how it looks after improving has been done. Okay. So uh, I think that what you should just pull the first... Jump into the first one. First video. Me trotting with Dalton in the snow. Yeah. And we've been we've been looking at this um, yeah from in, a, an earlier stream absolutely. So this is uh, I th I think this might have been last year, L like this winter. No, it was the the, the year, year before. before. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Yeah. And you can see it, it's very difficult to sit to. Uh, yes. It's like so hard. You can see that I'm bouncing, dunk, 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 and he. It, it's also very difficult to get him to. To like stretch down to the bit. I'm doing half halts incessantly. Yep. Because he was really. His problem was that it was stiff and blocked in his neck, blocked in his shoulders, and also and very. The back. the back was really sagging. Oh, yeah. So it's difficult to get him to, to like put his hind legs under. Yeah. So that what we can see is that, that, that the trot is really choppy and yep. not. Um, flowing not elegant not uh, you know no so but what we're I'm, I'm gonna show you a few show you a few little uh, pointers so here and from this point it's a little bit downhill yeah so what we're doing here is or what honey is doing she's trying to uh, shorten up the horse just a little bit and try to get him ready for the correct or the best possible trot that will happen from somewhere here but this time it's just half halts all the time, as you see. So still the same very small trot. Tries to stretch him a little bit, but he doesn't really want to. Okay, so we're back to the turn and we're back to the downhill and we're doing the same thing again. I cut, cut the head over there for a little while. That's, it's me filming, I'm, I'm sorry guys. Um, yeah, we're looking at the Right, voice. so we're still... <laughs> uh, still going downhill, downhill, and... Uh, but I don't know if it's this one or the next one we'll see now. Yeah, you see? A little bit of a stretch of the trot, and yeah. again, a little bit of an opening you up. You can see also that the rain is just, you're doing this, yeah. and that's because I'm, I'm letting go of the reins a little, yeah. and he, he doesn't stretch to, the, no. to that yielding He stretches rain. a little bit, but he yeah. doesn't follow the rain all the no. way. Because he's too stiff in his neck, so he can't do it, he's not able to. Now this stiff in the neck thing is really difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. So... I'm the neck, wondering. The neck muscles are too short. Uh, uh, that is not difficult to understand, mm -hmm. but how that hinders everything, that's really difficult to understand. So we need to talk a little bit about that. Um, so the one, of the one way to start the understanding of the neck thing is to understand the uh, antagonist yeah. functionality. Mm -hmm. So in a muscle, uh, the tendency is that if one muscle is tight, 
this muscle then can't do its job properly because they have opposite jobs. This one wants to shorten up and bend the elbow and this one wants to shorten up and straighten the elbow. So that's the only job the muscles can do. This is a, like a, it's a common misconception that a muscle can push. <laughs> a muscle can only shorten up. It's like spaghetti, like wet spaghetti. You can pull with it, but just you can't like push rope. much with it. Just like a rope. Or a rope. Yeah. You can pull with it, but you can't push with a rope. Mm -hmm. But you can attach ropes in different places and then you can get the pushing effect. That, that's possible quite easily. Um, today, actually, I was talking to one of my students about uh, the psoas complex. Mm -hmm. Like the muscle in, inside here that goes through your pelvis and uh, to your to your uh, look it up pelvis Google through your pelvis and to your, the inside of your thighs, um, and it is a stabilizing piece of musculature, uh, and it can help stabilize, especially if you're sitting. It helps stabilizing a lot, and if you're not very good at all the other stuff, then it tends to take over. And if it cramps up, let's say it cramps up. Then it works like an antagonist for all the other support systems around your, around your spine. Mm -hmm. And around the lower neck here tends to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So if this, these muscles in the horse, like on the, like on the side here, if these muscles are tight, they will bring the neck to be short. And at the same time, they'll make sure that nothing back here will work at all. Mm -hmm. And then... Or it will just block into one position. So it, it tends to be an either or. Mm -hmm. Either it blocks into a short position or it just drops into a long position. And if, if the horse does this, the shoulders will get too tight. So yeah. it's impossible to do like, like mixed long strides yeah. with and that the front it, legs. And that's because if these muscles are tight and you stretch forward, these muscles won't be doing anything. So when you catch the ground, there's nothing to support other than to slow down with an already shortened up muscle. Mm. Really difficult stuff to kind of wrap your head around, but these are the things that you have to look for. So I think we should just uh, continue to the next movie mm -hmm. and I will we'll keep looking at the trot. And we'll keep dissecting it to the best of our abilities, yeah? Yeah, first we'll uh, just do uh, some uh, walking. Some sh some walking, all right, mm. right. Um, just to, to see now that his neck has become, has become longer. Yes, absolutely. And much more, like, you can see there's much more activity. Yeah, and that is something that, you know, um, his... Uh, I see that it says that he Dalton is seven years old, but he's seventeen. Yeah, just misses a, a yeah. one. He's seventeen, no yeah. problem. So he's just a short. He's a little type of... older and stiffer, <laughs> and has has got uh, a lot of uh, old uh, injuries from yep. before. Yeah. That that is the the injuries are not bothering him any longer, but he's still stiff in his shoulders and neck and, and yes. So what? I'm doing here is that I'm trying to let him stretch mm -hmm. and to see, and now you can see that he's actually stretching his head down. Now he's stretching down and towards the end of this you can see that his his uh, back becomes less dropped like this. Yeah, because he's so still here you can when see you, that he's... Yeah, now he's dropped but when you lean up, lean forward and stretch him, there mm -hmm. you go, he becomes flatter in yeah. the back mm -hmm. for a little while. Mm. And then it becomes downhill, so that's more difficult again. But that's all right. He looks much longer, and it looks much more like uh, like the same horse throughout. It doesn't look like one hind set of hindquarters mm. and a completely different set of front end of the horse. And you see that the the shoulders are moving, so that it doesn't look like both legs are coming out of the same hole. Yes, because it 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 where even when the shoulders are like that, uh, like they were in the in the last video. Um, then the, it doesn't matter what the hind legs do because they can't move faster or take longer strides than the front leg front legs are able to do. True. So the first thing we do when we try to 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 improve the trot is to make sure that the horse is not stiff in its jaws, in its neck, in its shoulders, and in its back, and then we are. Um, I at least I start bending the horse on the, on the circle um, 
to to make sure that it can stretch its outside shoulder and it's out, outside of its jaw and neck. Yep. Uh, an important point there, you said that you ten, you want to bend the horse and ride him on a circle. Uh, and uh, the a piece of reasoning for that, that's grounded in, in uh, the understanding of how to train, is that the shoulder joints and the hip joints, they have multiple angles of movement available to them. And this means that you cannot stabilize by just tightening one set of muscle. This is extremely difficult to kind of wrap your head, head around again, but it, the shoulder can move this way and it can move this way, right? It has mm -hmm. several different... So this is just the upper arm moving in the shoulder and it can move this way and it can move out like that. We can also move the whole shoulder complex, the shoulder girdle, and that means that around the shoulder here, we need to be able to not only do movement, like not only tighten one muscle as we could with the with the, um, the elbow, we can tighten it from the front and the back and it will stay stabilized. Mm -hmm. But the shoulder does not. No. Uh, you have to true. you have to tighten it like like that. And the same is true for the hip joints. You have to tighten in like just twisting like, motion just like this yes you do that with a... yeah and then if you do that enough it'll be proper tight right mm -hmm. but if you just take one of these strands and pull it tight mm -hmm. that won't do anything for then the stability in the rest yeah. of mm -hmm. in the rest of the um, the movement and this is uh, this is an important thing and it is related directly to what Hannes says about bending the horse and riding on a circle when you bend and ride on a circle you can see that uh, let's if we relate that to uh, the dressage tests, you will see that if the horse twists its foot on the ground, mm -hmm. that's a fault. Yeah, and the reason for that is that that means that the hip joint isn't twisting, and that has to be remedied. And then it happens um, at the hoof. Uh, the, against the, the hoof ground. twists against the ground yeah. instead of getting the movement mm. through the shoulder or, or the hip. So this is an important point. It's also when the horse is paddling with the front legs. Yes. That is the same. That so can be the same the, thing. Get the shoulder to, to work properly. Yeah. Then the horse will stop paddling. Yes. So uh, in our opinion, paddling it can be from several things. A lot of horses have the tendency towards paddling. So it's not because you are messing up everything but it still can be bettered. And this is what we're aiming at, right? So the horses that paddle, the front leg wants to turn in. The whole shoulder complex is turned in like this, and then the foot needs to be turned like that. And when you load it, and then you want to release it, you can't release it because only these muscles are working. So you have to flip it to the outside. Mm -hmm. and that's when the paddle starts. Mm -hmm. So it means that there's probably a miss, um, what do you call it? Misalignment of how much these muscles are used compared to how much the muscles on the backside are used. Yeah, you, just, you want the horse to, as we had said many times, uh, want the horse to lift its uh, front end, yep. forehand up uh, for yep. each step so that the shoulders get more freedom so that uh, the, the horse can move its front legs yeah. easy, easier. 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 Always easier. So that is right? what we're going to study now. Because yeah. we're going to... The, the, the um, latest... All the, the rest of the videos are from like two days ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. Monday, I think. Yeah. Yes, let's have a see, look at uh, the next movie, yeah, please. The one that is the first one with trot. Mm -hmm. And I've, I'm wearing this... Um, striped training pants because of it's easier to see the movement in the hip joint and the knee yeah and i'm not i'm not at all perfect when it comes to movement in my in my leg and and hip but you can see that there is some movement forwards in the hip joint and there is uh, a movement in the knee and they're, they're supposed to be 
a movement uh, when you're doing the rising trot and also the sitting trot. You can see here that he's behind the vertical. Yep. Even though if I let him go on a longer rein, he's still behind. But I'm also bending him and positioning him to the, side, to the inside quite a bit to get him to relax. Yep. Because he, if we start trying to get him to the outside rein too early, he will start tensing up big time. And then he will not lengthening his, be lengthening his traits, traits. But you still, you can already see that his, um, his uh, front leg movement is much better than for the first video. And the hind legs too. Yeah. He's struggling though. That is obvious. But you can see, if you want, if you want to see uh, a few pointers here that makes this look like a, like, it's easy to see that it is a better trot. Uh, however, it's difficult to point at what is actually better. So what, some of the things that we look at that are better. There's more opening between the front legs. There's not much, but there is some. It is obvious that the front legs are not stuck and just bending at the elbow. They are moving all the way through the, from the shoulder. Uh, you can see that the musculature just in front of the withers is kind of um jiggling in every stride mm -hmm. that means it's not tense it means it's working mm -hmm. so it's tens tensing and relaxing for every stride jump, 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 jump. and you can see that rhythm in the muscles in the neck uh, in the same way you can see that his abs are on mm -hmm. in not every stride, no, but and quite, then, quite often. It's difficult when it, when it's dark, you can't see it, but you can see it from about here. It is possible to see when he tightens. Now they're not properly on, but uh, from there, here they are. Mm -hmm. So when it got deeper, when the mud is a little bit deeper, he stabilizes more. And that's good. It is good. Mm -hmm. It's very good. It's important. But it's also you can see that he he drops his back every time I sit down. Yeah. Uh, and so he's he's very sensitive in his back. Yeah. Uh, and I try to sit down as lightly as I can, but he is doing that every time. So he, you can see that he's a little uneven in the rhythm, and that is because of that. Yeah. So if I stand in the stirrups all the time, you can, you will see difference. And that is also why it's so difficult to sit down on him because um, he will tense up yep. very, very easily. Yeah. Let's move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. We're sitting down. Stride is shortened. The horse is a bit too much bent to the inside, which is, there's a reason for it, but he is. Yeah, or else he will, in the beginning, just... Uh, just tense up in his neck and, and it tense up in those, those muscles that he needs to tr uh, to try to relax. Yeah, but you can see that his abs are working again. Yeah. And you, it's a strange thing, you, you know, quite often you hear that the idea is that the horse should pull his legs underneath him with the abs. That's not what he does. What the horse should do is when the hind leg hits the ground, then the abs should be on to make sure the back doesn't drop when it's supported yes. at either end. Yes. That is the point of them. And you can see that in the rhythm if you're really sharp. See? And there, and there, and there, and there, and there. So every time the inside hind hits the ground, you can see that the abs just behind Hannah's leg, just in front of the horse's knee, they go tight every time the horse hits the ground. You see that? See? Yeah. This is I important. See, yeah. That is what I see look at all the time when I'm uh, lunging and when I'm instructing to see if the horse is actually actively using his abs. Yep. Uh, and the, what we can also see is that I'm trying to use my seat and sort of lift myself forwards mm -hmm. uh, in the stride, even though he's not actually yet doing that as much with his back, but I'm trying to... You're leading. Yeah, to lead that movement and relieve a little of my weight into the stirrups. And then it looks a little untidy, but that is because I'm helping him to to get a better back movement. And we will see that 
in the later videos how we uh, end up. Yep. Yep. So go next. So here we're trying to, to uh, give him a little more rain to make him stretch. And make him stretcher. Yes. And both of those things seem to be working fairly all right. And now you can He's see that he up. has actually a little step, uh, like a little length in his step. There's, It's much bigger now than it was just in the last mm -hmm. instant. Uh, and even if the movement is bigger, I'd say your seat is following better or it's yeah. more it's timely so the thing is that when he straightens out a little bit like this and lifts a bit more through his back now you can see his abs are like doing double duty oh this is fun we have to watch those abs again <laughs> thank you you see that mm -hmm. they stay connected yeah Yes, they do. But then, and then they, it's, but it's, you see a gunk, gunk yeah. whenever the hind leg mm -hmm. hits the ground. There's mm -hmm. more of a chunk, but they stay connected. Yeah. That's important. And this happens. Uh, th there's something that is important to say that th it's much easier to get the, the trot to become good after you cantered a bit. And uh, we've done, uh, we did some cantering uh, before this this take. So between the other one and uh, this one, we did some really good cantering. And cantering has been difficult on him as well, uh, because he has this tendency to tense up. Um, but uh, the canter is becoming much better as well. So it is, it is a patient work, you, you know, from day to day or every other day we don't ride. I don't ride him every day. I, I like to give the horse a day in between just to um, be, to uh, relax and become stronger. Yep. But the problem with him has been that if you give away the give the reins forwards, he does not stretch. He just turns upside down. Mm -hmm. But now he doesn't do that. Yep. Now you can you can give you see the horse the the reins are slack and yeah. and. Especially Rattling. the inside one, the outside one is more co in contact. Yeah, yeah. Which is good. Which is good. They, right. Now he's to the outside ring. Yes. It's important here to, to state this. So he's starting here to stretch himself, to straighten himself. And you can see that he's carrying better. The abs are more uh, obvious. And you can see the neck musculature is also more obvious. But it is also quite obvious that it is not too far away from his current maximum ability. No, he is really, it's still difficult to sit too. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's jerky, and you can see that it feels jerky in, in my seat and I'm, I'm not able to get a hold of him with my seat. Because it's possible when the horse is uh, 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 trotting in a jerky fashion like that, you, it's it's possible to take hold of the 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 saddle or the horse with your seat and just force the horse to go a little slower and take longer strides. Yep. And we'll see that in can we see the next video and see if we. I think it's just it at the le, uh, the last video I really managed to to do that a little, but it's still you can see that he's stretching a little more. And it's possible for me to like follow him forwards without him running because he wants so much to run. You can see that his shoulders are moving in a in a more restricted way than the hindquarters are. Yep. So that is his sort of bottleneck is his shoulders. Yep. But he needs to be able. You need to let him stretch. So it's like then then he will run and then you have to like a half halt again. And then you have to give away the rain, and then he will run. So you do that again and again. That is the only way to do it, to solve it, and of course to 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 work on circles and lateral movements and all that. Because you've done a bit of that too, right? Yeah, yeah. All the things that we have been talking, all the things that we're talking about in these streams are important. You don't just do one of the things. No. So. Mm. Uh, typically, I see that when Hanna starts riding, she will test a little bit first, 
and then she'll find out what the horse needs today. And then she will most of the time start training quite a lot sideways, quite a lot of smaller circles. Uh, and uh, when the horse starts to respond, she will straighten out and start lifting the horse through the withers and activate him through the midsection especially. That's what I can see when yeah. most of the time when she's training. Mm. So, so that first just a little test and then lateral movements will target the things that you want to work the most on. And with the lateral movements you're, you can work with just one diagonal as well. Yep. If the horse is stiffer in uh, one diagonal, then it's easier to, to address that because if you ride straight forwards, uh, the horse can sort of fool you. Uh, it will. It will fool you uh, and hide the fact that one diagonal is shorter than the other. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Uh, yeah. Some next, more? Yeah, next one. Um, I've lost the count now, but... I have no idea where we are now. I'm still behind him in my seat. Can you see that? Uh, yes. Yeah, it's because he's running away from my seat. And I'm trying to say, yeah, you have to walk, walk in my rhythm. <laughs> yeah. But there are things here that make it difficult. So you can see that uh, your legs are a little bit too much forward. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is that you can see that his rib cage is dropped. Yeah, so he's pushing my leg forwards. That is, that is something so, that, you know, we're talking about contact. And when the horse comes to the contact mm -hmm. and the horse, he, he, he doesn't come to the contact of the rein because when I give forwards, he's got, he, he has lots of contact on the outside. So that is no problem, but he doesn't take the contact on the inside. Mm -hmm. and, and then he does not take the contact to the seat and the leg. And that is because of that thing that you said, because of the yes. rib cage. So imagine if, if the back is shortened up, um, you can, if the top of the back is short like this side, it's shortened up like that, the rib cage on this side will drop towards the ground. So you can see that the rearmost part of his rib cage is kind of dropping towards the ground and it looks like he, he's got a belly. Only the belly isn't where the belly is. The belly is where the where the uh, rib cage is. Rib cage is. Mm -hmm. So it's quite typical to have that that uh, stature among horses and among people. So what we need to do is to make the abs even more active. Uh, make the shoulders freer because the freedom of the shoulder will allow the rib cage to orient itself properly mm -hmm. and then in the very end we will have to activate the hindquarters more too yes and then that will be easier when when all the other when the stuff in front of the saddle is more loose and free yep. and that was what we're talking about looseness that the horse needs to be loose before you start doing the impulsion and then now we're with dalton we're like starting on the impulsion so that he's he's able to to kick off with his hind legs and let the energy through yep uh is there one more video yep yep nice so let's see if i manage so we did to... keep count that there's four more four more have four we more? not oh, counted wow. at all there are so many that look the same <laughs> and these are uh, chronological so where i was just doing them and trying to do half halts and trying to get him to to wait for my seat. And that is it. You know, if you see that uh, he's, he's pushing, he's supposed to push my bum more forwards for each step. But yes. he's running away from... He cannot push forwards because his belly or his... Yeah. It's his, his abs are not on enough and his back is dropped too much. Yeah. So he can't push forward. That what happens then is he pushes down. Yeah. But let's try next one just to see because we don't have to see all of this, but I I included them so that we could 
it. Here you can see that I'm able to lift my seat much more forwards. Yes. Yeah. You can see that on the stripe. In the beginning, yes. Yeah. Because it's impossible to do that if the horse doesn't follow. And you can see that from the, we're, we're going to go back to the first video again afterwards and see that then the, the saddle d does not move forwards at all. It just moves up, up and down. And then we try the next video. Now he's trying at least to stretch a little. There, he was he was stretching a little, making a tiny little, a longer stride, but it's very difficult to see. We have restarted the same thing. Yeah, should be able to see it in about half a lap. So there was a tendency here, and yeah, you have to look at the tiny tendencies. There. There, yeah. And then he loses his balance. Yep. And the whole thing is to just slacken the rein and tempt him to stretch more. Because then the, the shoulders will uh, stretch as well. Yeah, but it needs to be within uh, the realm where he is able to actually do it. Yeah. If you just let go of the rein, it's like asking him to do something that is absolutely impossible for him mm -hmm. to do. Then so he will lose For his just balance. a split second there, he looks like a completely different horse. Yeah. And that is what we're looking for. Yeah. So, so I think So there's a thing we do that is uh, that might be interesting for you people out there. So when we look at someone ride, what we look for is that little moment of uh, much betterness. <laughs> <laughs> so have watch this now in a few seconds, two or three seconds here. Let's see. There we go. That's where he looks the best. And after that, we try to put the horse and the rider into that. Try to make you become more like that. And and then when you've seen it, it is possible to... It's much easier to see then what lacks in the rest of it. Mm. All right. Yeah. So like, let's try the last one then. Because here I was able to to lift him forwards a bit, some of in some of the strides. Without him losing balance. On average, here he moves much more forward. Yeah. There's much more impulsion. Mm hmm. And without him freaking out. At all. And now you can see that there's movement in the lower back. And the whole neck is working. Yeah. You can see that the muscles are like on, off, on, off mm -hmm. all the time. That's always a good thing. In the beginning when you ride a horse, quite often you won't see that it has muscle at all. It just <laughs> looks round or yeah. blocky or something. This is pretty good. Even the inside shoulder is moving a little bit on. The right shoulder is moving on a little bit. Oh, uh, by the way, most of this, all of it, is done on the right rein. The left rein with this horse is way worse. Yeah. Just so you guys know. But we, we, we chose to show everything on the same uh, side because then it's easier to compare. Yeah. So let's now take an... Uh, can, shall we take a look at the first video? Let, let's again? look at the first Just one and compare. see if there's any difference. Well, the stride is half as long. Yeah you're bouncing much more abruptly. I can promise you it's it's uh, two different things. It's, it's it's so choppy. Yes. How can we see it? You can see that my bum is bouncing out of the saddle and not forwards. Yeah, and you're leaning forward. Yeah. I I actually had to lean forwards because or else he will he would just uh, Lose his back and and uh, throw his head up. So it's to... it's like a remont seat. Yes, I must have a lot of uh, weight in my stirrups, just to let him uh, 
try to relax and he's relaxing quite well here mm -hmm. uh, uh, in in compared to what he uh, he could do yeah okay let's see the last video again can we please you see his outline is much longer yeah much looks like a much bigger horse yes his neck is much longer and looks much more elegant yeah and you see that my seat is following upwards and forwards. You're moving with him, sitting back even. Yeah. And my legs are a little wobbly still, but that is because he's not quite up in the in the back um, yet. No. That... And you could also see that my my hip joint is going up, uh, upwards and forwards, but not back and down again. No. It's not a full circle. No, it moves like in in just a like a a line like back and forth. Yeah, yeah. Instead of moving around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if you look at the horse, you'll see that from the the what do you call the uh, the cloth on the horse table. No, the, the, not tablecloth. No, no. Saddle cloth. It's, it's starting to become late. <laughs> so if you look at the saddle cloth from there backwards towards the horse's knee, so back and down, that area needs to close up. He's still what we call open behind. Yeah. So for him to become much better than this, we need to get his whole hindquarters tilted more underneath him. But you have to see this in context. So the whole back needs to come up at the same time. Mm -hmm. And and it's not a easy thing to do. No, and if we try to, if, if we, he can do a pee off with the, his bum uh, okay under, but he can't move forwards no, in but, that way. Because he can do a pee off like that. What he does is he straightens his leg out a little bit too much, but he's got extremely strong hamstrings. So he sits down into the hamstrings, but he doesn't activate his bum and he doesn't bend his knees and his back stays inverted. So even at the pee off, that mm -hmm. happens. Yeah. And that's the reason he can't properly move forward from that move from that position, mm -hmm. because the back is still inverted. Mm -hmm. And now you have loaded all the other joints in the system Lots in the wrong position. Nowhere to go. Uh, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then it's really, really difficult to fix that problem. But we are getting there. Yeah. And, and uh, he's just 17. We still have time. <laughs> yes. But it's a good, it's a, it's fun. It's a, he's a good horse. It's very nice. And we, of course, we want to, to help him to become better. But it's also a very good example for, for you guys uh, that also have a horse that is not perfect and that is struggling for, with, uh, with uh, things in his body. And uh, you want to help him improve. And... This shows that it's possible to do that and you just follow simple advice and uh, not give up. Yeah. Uh, a shout out, by the way, to Emma Pern, who jousted this horse at, at our tournament just a month ago. That was pretty tough. That's well done. That is well done. Mm. So that has been a lot about the trot. Yeah. Yeah. So it has shown improvement in the mm. trot. Uh, there is still lots and lots to improve. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there are different ways of improving this. But first thing you have to do is find the tight muscle and let it relax so that its antagonists also can do some work. Um, the problem, as we just described with the Piaf, is that if the back is tight, say the back is tight, and doesn't want to relax. Then you will have this uh, this uh, curve this way with the horse, right? So the whole horse looks like, like it's just a ski jump. <laughs> uh, and you, however much you sit the horse down, the ski jump is still there. Mm -hmm. And that means that the relationship between the pelvis and the back can't change properly. Or if the pelvis and the back are able to change in change between themselves, the rest of the back isn't able to lift softly forward. You can't lift it all like one block. Or if you can lift it all like one block, it means the shoulders and the hindquarters are already loose anyway. And these things are really, really difficult and important. So the trot is 
perhaps the most important exercise in order to make your horse into a uh, to change from doing individual movements into doing holistic thinking. So in the trot, the horse has to, at the same time, be connected over the back, but at the same time loose. Uh, and this, it, it sounds like a contradiction in terms, but it isn't, because muscles aren't on or off. Unless they're broken or you are really bad at what you're doing. You know that jerky movement that you do when you're trying out something you're not really good at or not haven't ever tried. Uh, I had this, I tried this today with my, I was out in the forest uh, doing some forestry and I was chopping uh, branches with an axe with my left hand, which is my good hand, and it's easy. And then I try the same thing with the right hand and it feels like someone else's arm is trying to do this stuff. I just can't control it. It's horrible. And that jerky, I can't control this motion. And I'm sure you all have tried that. But when you can get that all to flow, it feels like I'm not using any power at all. But the power, the, it's really powerful blow with the axe because all the muscles are moving in unison. And that's what's needed to do a good trot. You don't have to do that to get a canter to work or to get to work with your at your sideways lateral movements uh, at the walk but if you want a good trot like the one we have explained if you want that you must have everything at the same time to some degree but talking about that perhaps we should uh, talk about improving the canter next time because some, some people say that some of the the gates cannot be improved and our experience is that all gates can be improved. Yep. So quite simply, we'll see. Uh, as always, we um, we don't know what we're going to do the next time because we have to ask the horses. We have to ask our horses. Mm -hmm. We always do that. And as you have seen, we show you what the horses do. We have always done that too. So uh, we are going to keep doing that. Uh, I'm working on my Piaf at the moment, but the canter is getting better. And you actually like, did a very good levade recently. Yeah. After we had... Final. <laughs> Final. It was delayed. <laughs> Blast yeah. it. Yeah. No. Uh, so that it might be that we do the canter. As usual, though, shoot us some questions or ask for something you want to know more about. Yeah, because... Even if... No, not even uh -huh. if. Especially if you think it's a stupid question. <laughs> And, and this this episode with the, the improvement of the trot was actually um, because somebody asked if we can do that. So please ask. We'll try and show it. We can't show everything, but we can try. We do try everything. <laughs> At least once. Uh, so this has been uh, how to improve your trot. Uh, with improvement of the trot in a horse that has no right to be improving his trot at all but he He's has got, a need for improving yeah, his yeah, trot and, and i guess most of our students have horses with similar qualities similar trouble um, um and of course we have other horses uh, young horses that have very good basic qualities but um we'll we'll talk about those later when those horses are ready for training but um we find that um, we have a, a lot of people who really are interested in this, you know, uh, modest horses with modest gates, how we can help them, how we can improve, uh, help them improve. Yeah. So, um, as the autumn comes on, it's going to be hard to get training with all the stuff we want to. The ground is going to change and all that. Yeah, we're going to try. But we are going show. to train what we can train and we'll show you what we can do. Yeah. Every fortnight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this has been uh, Improving the Trot with uh, Trollspeiler. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being uh, today's guinea pig. <laughs> You're <laughs> well, welcome. Uh, see you in a fortnight. See ya. <laughs>